praise the Lord. We want to briefly look at what the scripture says in Psalm 103. But before we look into it, can we just have a brief moment of prayer? Our Father, we bless your name for bringing us into this day again for us to look at your word and be blessed by your word. We pray as we as you enlighten us through your word, as you expose your word to us, give us the understanding of your word in Jesus' name. We bless your name, Lord, because we know you have answered. In Jesus' name I've prayed. Amen. This is the, the uh, we are looking at forgiveness and healing. Forgiveness and healing. Uh, we will look at Psalm 103, verse 1 to 3. Psalm 103, verse 1 to 3. It says, Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me. Bless his holy name. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all his benefits. Verse 3. Who forgiveth all thine iniquities, who healeth all thy diseases. You can see, the Lord is the one who forgives us, is the one who heals us at the same time. It is the same Lord who forgives our sins when we confess before Him, when we surrender unto the Lord Jesus, when we believe in Him, when we repent of our sins. It is the same Lord who forgives us, that also uh, heals us of our sicknesses, uh, heals us of our diseases. You see, the reason why there is sickness and the, the diseases is because of the sin of the people, the nature, the sinful nature of the people. That is why there is this sickness, that is why there is the disease reigning in their lives. But if they can turn away from their sins, there is a twofold miracle of the gospel there. There is a twofold miracle of the gospel and that is for them to be saved from sins and to be healed of their sicknesses. It's for them to have salvation of their souls and healing of their bodies. Yes, healing of their bodies. That is a twofold miracle of the gospel there. It is not when, when one is sick, one should not say the sickness is from God. No, one should not say God is using the sickness to, to teach one uh, to, to teach one a lesson or to, to as a means of correction. No, no, God does not use sickness. No, sickness does not come from God. Sickness is from the devil, it's from Satan. And for this purpose, the Son of God, Jesus Christ, has come, uh, he has been manifested to destroy all the works of the devil. So, if Jesus Christ has been manifested to destroy all the works of the devil, all the works of the devil, including sin, including sickness, then why will sickness come from God? Why will God bring something he has already destroyed? No, so sickness is not from God. Sickness is from the devil. So, you should have the, that mindset. You should have that um, that uh, awareness, that consciousness, whenever sickness is in the body, that it is not from God, that it is of the devil. And you need to pray, you need to call upon the name of the Lord. The Bible says, whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. If you want to be saved from your sins, call upon the name of the Lord and he will save you. If you want to be delivered from sicknesses, call upon the name of the Lord and it will deliver you from your sickness. It will deliver you from disease. Now, there is one thing that hinders. There is one thing that hinders people from receiving their, their miracles. There is something that hinders people from receiving their miracles. First is sin. When there is sin in one's life, then that one's miracles will be hindered. Because even the Bible says, If thou regard iniquity in thy heart, the Lord will not hear thee. So that sin has to be removed first. That's enough to be removed first. Uh, you see what uh, Jesus Christ told the, the woman who was caught in the very act of adultery. He said that what hath no man condemned thee? And she said, No man, Lord. And then he said unto her, Go. He said, Neither do I condemn thee. Go and what and sin no more. Now, Jesus Christ did not condemn, he did not come to the world to uh, condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. Now, if the woman now continues in her sin, if she now continues in her adulterous lifestyle, the, what will come upon her will be worse and that may bring to her ruin, it may bring to her destruction and perdition. 
So it now it's not less for her now to now follow after what Jesus Christ has commanded her and what Jesus Christ has given her, the injunction that the Lord Jesus has given unto her, and that will make her not to sin anymore, so that she can have the blessing of the Lord. And so that was what he also told the impotent man whom he healed. He found him in the temple and he said that what he said that he should go and sin no more. He told him to not, he said, sin no more, lest a worse thing come upon him. He told him not to sin anymore, lest a worse thing come upon him. So, for us to not allow worse sicknesses, to, for us to not allow the sickness to worsen, the disease to worsen, we need to turn away from our sins and then it will be eliminated. It will be eliminated. Let's look at Isaiah 33. Let's look, look at what that place tells us to tell you that what it is sin that brings about all the disease and all the you know sicknesses. Look at in Isaiah 33 in verse 24, and the inhabitant shall not say, I am sick. The people that dwell therein shall be forgiven their iniquity. The inhabitants shall not say, I am sick. The people that dwell therein shall be forgiven their iniquity. You can say that agrees with what the psalmist said in Psalm 103. He said that what bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me, bless his holy name. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all his benefit. Does it mean the Lord does not give us benefit? He gives unto us. He only wants us to stop our sins, stop our commission of iniquity. That is when he will be able to invest three who forgiven all thy iniquities is when we repent and believe in the Savior Jesus Christ, His only begotten Son, who He has sent into the world to die for our sins. It's when we believe in Him that we will be forgiven of all our iniquities, we will be saved from our sins. Look at it, who forgiven all thy iniquities, not one of these iniquities, not one of the sins we have committed will be left unwashed, will be left on un, on un, on un, un blotted. Everything will be blotted out, everything will be washed away, everything will be wiped out decimated by the precious blood of, of the Lord Jesus Christ. Then, who healed all thy diseases? It is when we have faith, when we believe in the name of the only begotten Son of God, that is when our sins will be removed and our diseases will be removed also. It will be exterminated by the power of resurrection. When we believe in that sacrifice of Christ on the, on the cross of Calvary, and we believe that he, he died on the cross of Calvary. We believe that he rose again the third day. We believe in that power of resurrection. That power of resurrection will work effectually to decimate our sins and to grant us healing, cure. It will, it will grant us the benefits, all the benefits embedded in that sacrifice, all the benefits that the Lord himself wants us to have. Are you facing any trouble? Are you facing any challenge in your health? facing any challenge in your body, call upon the name of the Lord now. Remember, whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Remember also that the soul's salvation is the first thing. When your soul is saved, when you are when you're a saved soul, then you can also be saved in your body. You can also be healed of your sicknesses and your diseases call upon the name of the lord now and he will grant you his all-round salvation as well as his all-inclusive redemption